it is Kyla from Paranormal at the Boneyard and I am very, very excited today. As you can see, I am in a vehicle with my brother. Say hi, brother. Hello. And we are leaving Hamilton. Yay! So, I mean, not that Hamilton's a bad place. There's tons and tons of ghost stories in Hamilton, but we are taking a four hour drive from Hamilton and we are heading to Kingston. Woo! So, um, I'm very excited about that because we are going to Skeleton Park! Woo! Yes! I'm not going to talk about it until we get there, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that this is probably going to be more of a, a road trip vlog than a ghost vlog, <laughs> but we will talk about ghosts. I mean, oh, GPS is telling us to go left. Um, so. I'll probably keep popping up while we're driving there. Hopefully I can get my brother to stop at one place in particular. It's called the Big Apple. They have apple stuff. It's really, really good. Um, but uh, yeah, so it might just be more of a road trip vlog. Well, we've entered Toronto and now we're going like 10 kilometers an hour. So yeah, welcome to Toronto. <laughs> Only two and a half more hours to go, I guess. I'm still having fun. I hope Brayden's having fun, but I'm having fun. I'm very excited. We are approaching the Big Apple. There it is. I don't know why I'm excited about it, but I always want to come there when we go this way. We are in the Big Apple and behind us. That's them making pies. Woo! And this is their gift shop. And here's where you buy your cider and baked goods. If for no other reason, I just like coming here because it smells good. Lots of nice treats too. And why is this place called the Big Apple? Because there's a big freaking apple right there. I have to confess, whenever I've come here, it's usually like in October or November. This is the first time I've come during the summer season. And I've never seen it this busy before. But there's like a whole playground. There's like places to eat for picnic lunches. There's a petting zoo. All this stuff is closed when I come here. This is the first time I've ever been here where it's all open. So if I didn't have someplace else to go, we could spend all day here, Brayden. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and we just came to this side. This is what you see from the highway. Is this giant face on the apple. So that's the other side of the apple. And you just spin around here. Ah, I can't see with the sun. There's the highway. So when you drive by on the highway in Colburn, Ontario, and you see this giant face looking at you. No, we're in Colburn. That is the Big Apple. And it's just a really cool place. And apparently in the summertime, extremely busy. So we're just making our way back to the car now, but. One of my favorite meatloaf songs. Yes, we're back in the car. I'm a runaway train on a broken track I'm the ticker on the bomb that you can't turn back this time That's right I got away with it all and I'm still alive Let the end of the world come tumbling down I'll be the last one standing on the ground As I just dust clear smoke in my eyes I'm still alive I love this man I'm so sad he's gone I'm so so sad he's gone. We just entered Kingston, so now we gotta find a way off this highway and get to our location. So according to the GPS, about 25 minutes. So we're almost there. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> We have arrived. We are at Skeleton Park in Kingston, Ontario. I'm very, very excited about this. And the thing that's funny is that its original name, and it's still, it's actually still called McBurney Park, but even here on the plaque, it says Skeleton Park and the very original Upper Burial Grounds. Upper Burial Grounds meaning Skeleton Park. This park is on top of a cemetery. So uh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> it's called Skeleton Park and uh, this is a licensed cemetery. It opened up in 1819 and the park is part of Upper Burial Grounds, uh, but it closed when it came to capacity. It officially closed in 1864 and then these grounds became completely neglected. Um, it was overgrown. People would bring their cattle in here to uh, graze and all the cows would eat the grass and then knock over stones and it was just a big mess. 
Um, and there was also a problem with grave robbers, which we'll talk about a little bit later after that. So I think in the 1890s, late 1880s, they decided the people in the city, the town was growing. They didn't want to look at this eyesore anymore of a cemetery. They said, look, we got to do something with this. So they went to the city council and said, let's do something with this city or with this, this area here. And so they said, okay, we'll make a park, but we got to dig up all the bodies. And that's on you, the family. So the families had to incur the cost of digging up their relatives and putting them somewhere else. Now, when they did this, there was a problem. We've hit a new location. As you can see, it's very popular. There's a little Harry Potter group, it looks like, over here going on. Um, now, as I said, that they said, okay, you want the bodies removed? It's on, it's on to the families to incur the expense of removing the, uh, the bodies. So when they did that, they found a little surprise. These bodies were not six feet under. Most of them were like uh, two feet under the ground. And they also noticed that some of these bodies were literally one on top of each other, on top of each other, on top of each other. So there was actually mass graves here as well. And then they found out that some of these people, so who have been in the ground for decades, have not been properly decomposing. So they're not decomposing at the rate you would think somebody who's been in the ground for 20 some odd years to be decomposing. They were not skeletonized. They were not mummified. They were just kind of gooey. And they've claimed that that is because of uh, the way the water retention is. It's in, in the water, in the grounds here. It's just not decomposing properly. So there was that problem. And then on top of all that, they found out that one of the reasons why there's mass graves are because of the uh, epidemics that hit through this town, like cholera and typhus and, uh, oh, there was another one I can't think of at the time. Uh, diphtheria. So they went through all of that and then people were like, okay, well, what if, what if they're still contagious? Oh my God, you know, like they're only two feet under the ground and there's like one on top of each other and there's mass graves and, and there's graves of soldiers. What if these people are all contagious still, you know, because they're not decomposing properly. So that set in a little bit of a panic, which then set into the, the, the person who was running the American uh, waters for shipping found out about this and was like, there's still um, contagious bodies under that ground. Yeah, I don't think so. We're not bringing any ships in if you start picking people up. So a maximum of 100 people were taken out and interred somewhere else. So 100 family members were able to get their, their, their relatives out and buried somewhere else. And then the government, the, the municipal government just said, you know what, let's just knock over all the tombstones, put some grass on top of that, plant some trees, and we'll just make it a park and that's exactly what they did. So there are anywhere from five to 10,000 graves under where I'm standing right now in this park. It's not a little, little tiny park, it's not a big park. And they believe anywhere from five to 10,000 people are still buried under here. And they're not sure of the exact number because they did not keep good records back then. has been built on top of the graves and uh, the thing that they found interesting in the 1950s little boys would like to come along here and uh, dig stuff up and this was a this has been known that they would dig up skulls of people who were gone I guess by 1950 they had decomposed finally at last and um, they would take the skulls and mount them on their bicycles and go for a ride and uh, that's just I don't know, a little bit disrespectful, <laughs> but, uh, and then they would take, they would find, they would dig up the tombstones that they would find underneath here, and they would use them as bases for baseball. So yeah, that was interesting. Um, we're gonna go along, but there's two 
markers that are commemorating the dead that are here. Uh, one is original, one is, is newer. And um, I think the last time somebody found something because of the shifting you know, soil and, and you know, the earth shifts and things like that, there uh, is one report in, I think it was 2007 was the last one where this guy was playing catch with his son and he looked down and found a tombstone. So the tombstones sometimes come up to the surface. I've heard rumors, you know, I don't know if it's true, but there have been rumors that's every once in a while when they do construction and things like that, uh, they'll find bones. Um, somebody said that they were doing, they were dig, digging up for this playground, found a femur sometimes in this area here with the housing. Uh, people find bones in their backyard. I don't know if that's true, but um, it is a documented thing about the guy finding the tombstone when he was playing catch with his son, and I believe that was 2007, and I believe that was the last time there was um, a sighting of something from the cemetery. So uh, right now I'm in the playground park, and uh, I'm in love with this monkey bar set. So it's just so unique and I'm small enough to fit into it. <laughs> Ooh, I could go over here. I'll do the rest of my stuff right here. <laughs> All right, so we have arrived at the cannon, which is at the front of this trail leading into the park. And I just saw this on YouTube, a lady explaining why this cannon was here. And uh, apparently it is a warning to the grave robbers. Now, before this was a park, when it was still a derelict um, cemetery with everything overgrown over top of it, there were a lot of grave robbers that would come here and steal the bodies and sell them to the students at Queen's University. Now, Queen's University has a medical unit, being a medical town. And um, so they would take the bodies, and the weird thing was, the students had to supply their own cadavers in order to do the exams that they needed to do in order to pass and become doctors. If they did not supply their own cadavers and they didn't do the job, they failed. So they didn't supply them with the dummies, they didn't supply them with cadavers of people who donated their bodies, they just went, uh, yeah, you gotta supply your own, and if you don't, you fail. It's like, okay, so how insane is that? So the people had to, find their own way of getting cadavers so they went to grave robbers who would come here because this was a derelict abandoned cemetery and they would dig up people and sell them to the students and the students illegally bought them well when people found out about this they weren't too happy as I don't think many people would be so they made sure that they had somebody on guard so that this wouldn't happen and for some reason this cannon was put here as a warning and I don't know if that meant hey you steal a grave we're gonna shoot you with a cannon or we're just going to shoot you, <laughs> which is probably more towards the truth. Is that they're just going to be shot, you know. So, yeah, um, I just thought it was interesting. I know in Hamilton, where I live, uh, there's a bunch of cannons all over the place, and I think they're just leftovers from the War of 1812. There's a military base not far from here. It might be the same thing for all I know. I don't know, but uh, yeah. So there's a cannon here, and I got a thing for big military cannons for some reason from way back when. So that's why I'm here. Don't steal graves. <laughs> okay, so we are at uh, one of two monuments here that commemorate the cemetery. This one was, is a more recent addition that was put here um, to commemorate the estimated 10,000 graves of Irish and Scottish descent people who used to be here. Um, so. I don't know how they would feel about having a park just sort of placed on top of them. I know some people are like, well, I think it's lovely that the laughter of children would be heard and all this kind of stuff. I'm like one of those crotchety old men who'd be like, get off my body! Like, I would just be like, <laughs> so the other one is all the way over there. I won't be doing any filming there because that's, well, that's where the Harry Potter group was. Um, so I'm not going to be doing any close-ups at that place. But I did take some and it's in the background, so hopefully that's good. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad that they've got a little marker here, and they're not denying it. They're not lying and saying, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, a cemetery. I'm glad that they've acknowledged that, yes, it's here, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, you know, just either accept it or don't come to the park. That's what I like about that, is they've, they've acknowledged it, they've acknowledged the people that are here. And, uh, yeah, so obviously with this kind of craziness, with the grave robbing and the cows and people playing on top and all the activity and the energy of the living, there's gonna be some ghost stories. 
and some of them I think are pretty compelling and then other ones I'm like really come on really okay so we will get to two young women who live in an apartment around here um, some of these houses have been broken up and made into dorms for like apartment dorms for, for college students university students and there was two women who lived in an apartment here and they claimed that they used to see mists and figures in the mist at night in a park that's not far from water. That one I kind of have trouble with because there's mist at night a lot. So I don't, I hope the Harry Potter kids are okay. <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, I have a little bit of problem with that. You always gotta try and look at the logical first. If you see mist on the ground, it could just be it was a cold, you know, ground and hot air and I don't know the science of it, but there's mist on the ground. Um, and then a couple of times they felt in their apartment that they were being watched or they'd see dark figures or they'd see darkness. And again, I'm not trying to just totally dismiss them and say they're crazy. I would never say that. But at the same time, I always try to think of the logical side first. And, you know, there's things like sleep paralysis, and there's always sometimes that feeling of being watched by somebody and stuff like that. So I get it, you know, it's just always look at the logical first. So I can't exactly 100% say, yes, they definitely saw ghosts. The other thing that I've seen, or that I've been told, I didn't see it myself, that would be cool, it is the daytime. And there is supposed to be hauntings that you can see in the daytime. Some people see children running around, playing, and then all of a sudden just disappearing. And I'm like, okay, we're going in the daytime, so maybe that'll be, you know, there. And then we can see that, that would be totally awesome to just be able to look over and see some children, and then they just disappear in thin air. And some people say it's residual. Some people say it's an intelligent haunting. Um, if the children interacted with other people I would say it's more um, intelligent but if they're just uh, running along and then disappearing it's probably residual. There is also people who have heard whispering voices now obviously during the day that would be much 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 more difficult to hear because well like I said we just heard the kids over there doing Harry Potter stuff and they were yelling and screaming and then there's traffic going by and there's people with their families and there's dogs and cats so if you're gonna hear whispering it's probably if you came here at night which apparently a lot of people don't do they don't like to come here at night because there's also aggressive spirits here um, people that probably like me when I said I was the crotchety old man saying get off my body you know it was people who like to push they get angry especially the people who want to do ghost tours apparently people who do the ghost tours through here they end up getting pinched or pushed and one thing that I found extremely interesting and it kind of makes me want to do it but I won't because of four hours away <laughs> but if it said if you come here at night midnight on a full moon this park disappears and all the tombstones that have been knocked over and broken come up and you can see it and it looks just like a full cemetery again and I was like that I'd like to see I would love to see that I would love to see because I'm a cemetery freak I love the cemetery and just to be able to see an entire park disappear and all the stones come up that would be pretty cool um, there have been people who said they've also seen full-bodied apparitions and there are people who live around in these houses around the area here that say um, they claim to experience poltergeist activity. Some people have claimed to see orbs. Again, my view on orbs is kind of, <laughs> I can usually explain what they are. Um, and feeling cold chills and feeling fear and not knowing why. And they do that in their own home. It's not just in the park. So it has spread out. I don't know. I don't think the cemetery goes beyond this park. But so the spiritual energy is like, maybe they're like, well, you're going to invade my cemetery. I'm going to invade your homes. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, that's pretty much it for the hauntings in this, in this cemetery slash park, which uh, is known as Skeleton Park. It's uh, even on the plaque over there. And uh, they're constantly doing work on it. They're doing work right over here. You just want to hand the camera over there. So they're constantly trying to improve the place. And I think that's wonderful. Um, if you're, it's better than just leaving as a neglected field with broken tombstones. That's to me is a tragedy. Do I like the fact that they just knocked over all the stones and buried them? No, I don't like that. But they're making use of the property. 
they've acknowledged their mistake from, what, a hundred years ago when they did that, and uh, they accept it, and they accept the ghost. So I suggest if you want to come here, it's a, it's a cute little park, it's not that big, come on down to the Skeleton Park or McBurney Park, but it's known as Skeleton Park, and uh, in Kingston, Ontario. And uh, since they said every once in a while you find tombstones and bones that may have come up to the surface, guess what my brother and I are going to do now? We're going to wander around for a little bit and see if we can find something. Wait, trips. Just a stick. I'm trying to be quiet because they're actually the Harry Potter people are actually doing a performance right now so I don't want to interrupt that too much um, and they're at the monument I want to take a picture of so we're just gonna wait a little bit see if they kind of walk away from there but uh, we're at the baseball diamond and this is where the kids apparently put the tombstones that they dug up out of the ground and made into bases so what the heck I'm here I'm just gonna take a wander around the bases and see what I can find Okay, I was waiting for them to leave, but then they decided to do a whole show, so I can't go up to the monument and say what it was. This is the only remaining living tombstone that is in the whole cemetery that's still standing. Now, I looked as we were walking by, I did see something that I thought might be a tombstone, but I can't dig it out because it's kind of public and um, it was pretty buried in there, but I'm, st I'm going with the fantasy that it was a tombstone. Um, but uh, this is, I think, to commemorate the first reverend or the last reverend before they closed the cemetery down. But it's for a reverend and his family who used to live in the area. So that's all I really know about it. Just that this is the only remaining standing tombstone in the whole cemetery. And it was too expensive to tear down, which is why they didn't. And the kids are screaming, so I'm going to stop now. So. <laughs> Well, that was tons of fun. So I'm gonna show the radio down a little bit. So uh, basically, yeah, we just went to the park and now we're on our way back. So like I said, it's not gonna be uh, the most ghostly uh, vlog I've had, but it's been one of the most fun because I got to hang out with my brother. And um, yeah, so we're just on our way back towards Hamilton. And uh, so we're gonna be another four hours. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually gonna stop somewhere because if we go, it'll probably be another six hours because we'll be in stuck in rush hours. So we're gonna have stop at a, a rest stop and have some dinner and you know. But it was lots of fun. I've I've never been to that park. I know nothing about it. Um, didn't see any uh, ghost children. Saw lots of Harry Potter kids though. And same uh, thing. Same thing. <laughs> and so we're just gonna drive on home and play some music and you on with our good day well back home <laughs> so I had a lot of fun today I was it was a long way to go for a vlog but uh, I wanted to go somewhere that wasn't Hamilton not that there's anything wrong with Hamilton it's just I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of vlogs from there there's a lot of ghosts in Hamilton but uh, I wanted to do someplace different and uh, when I heard about Skeleton Park I was like I have to do that I have to go there my cats are making noise now from stuff that I brought home <laughs> So, so uh, I first off would like to thank my brother for going with me. I was going to go by myself if nobody wanted to come, but he was like, yeah, let's go. So he was willing to actually, and he drove, which is nice because I don't like driving, and he drove the whole way. So four hours there, four hours back. Thank you so much. Mm, thank you, Brayden. I really, really appreciate that. Um, 
and he held the camera because I forgot my tripod, which I have right now and I'm using right now, but uh, I forgot it there. So, uh, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, of course, the one day I decided to go is when some Harry Potter group was there doing a play. So, <laughs> and so I'm trying to be quiet. And, um, you know, when I was at the park, I did find what I believe not, they weren't the tombstones, I believe they were the bases of tombstones. And, you know, they, what the tombstone was on top that got knocked over, and this is the base. And they just look like rocks now. But I've been in a lot of cemeteries. I don't need no ground penetrating radar, radar to tell you where the graves are. I'm walking along going, yep, this right here. You can tell by the indentations in the earth, and you can tell by the way the grass is growing or not growing. I'm like, yep, right here, there's a there's a there's something here, and there's something over there. And it's like, I am the ground pen penetrating trading radar for a cemetery so I was able to tell that and uh, I know it was more of a road trip vlog than a paranormal vlog but I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I had fun doing it um, it was nice to hang out with my brother. It was nice just to go for a drive, sing songs with music, and just have a good time. And I always like stopping at the Big Apple. I'm in love with their caramel apple muffin, um, which is very sloppy because it's got all the caramel on top, but it's a very good muffin. <clears throat> Um, maybe someday I'll just take a day and do a road trip there and just hang out with the petting zoo animals and stuff like that. <laughs> So, but that was fun. And uh, going to Kingston, and I, it's a beautiful place, and I, I like the town, and it's really pretty, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, coming back was, you know, the traffic wasn't fun, but uh, it was still fun because I was with my brother. Um, but uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we didn't find any bones in the ground. We didn't find any tombstones. I thought maybe at one point I might have, but I did not. It was just either a little walkway thing, because it looked like there was like stones for a walkway at one time, and it's kind of just been crumbled up and everything. Um, but yeah, we didn't see any ghost children. I did. I I was looking, but you never know. I have to review the, review the film. Maybe somewhere in the background there is a ghost child running, and it'll disappear, and we'll be able to catch it. So we'll hope for that. Um, yeah. So if you're ever there at midnight on a full moon. See if you can see the whole park disappear and all the tombstones raise up from the ground. That would be really cool to see. Um, and uh, just be careful when you're there. There are some aggressive ghosts if you ever do go. And uh, they like to push and pinch people, especially if you're taking a ghost tour there. So always be careful for the aggressive ghosts. As for some of the people who claim that they have had you know, paranormal encounters there or in their own apartments or something like that, always try and look for the logical explanation first. You know, just just because. I mean, it's just, just look for the logical explanation first, and if you really can't think of one, then it could be paranormal. That's, that's always my thing, is let the logic go first, and then if you can't think of a logical explanation, and nobody else can think of a logical explanation, then it, it might be paranormal. You know, that's just my opinion. I, I used to go running headlong into the paranormal theories and things like that, but as I've gotten older, I've just sort of went, wait a minute, it could be this or it could be that, you know, and especially when I started uh, doing professional photography and I would see these orb pictures and things like that. And uh, I started to realize it's not always, um, it's not always paranormal. So always think of the logical thing first. Like if you see orbs, try and figure out what it is. It could be anything from uh, rising mist, snowflakes, um, just dampness in the air can cause an orb, you know, like bugs flying by, things like that. Always think of the logical first. Doesn't have to be scientific, just logical. <laughs> so, so for that, I am going to go. I am so happy that you joined me all the way through the video. Thank you very, very much. This is Kyla from Paranormal at the Boneyard. And don't forget to watch The Boneyard with TJ Palmer. He does interviews with all kinds of musicians and artists and, and writers. And he just, he loves artists. He absolutely loves them. And he's amazing at interviewing people. He likes to sit there. He actually becomes your friend. You actually start to laugh and converse with him. He talks about himself. You talk about yourself. And it's just, it's just so much fun talking with TJ because he's so heartwarming and authentic and you know he's just like hey this is how I am take me or leave me and let me hear all about you like he's really interested in what you're doing and he's genuinely just a wonderful human being so be sure to watch uh, just the regular Boneyard uh, hashtag the Boneyard on Facebook and um, Yep, yeah, this is Kyla, and I'm leaving Paranormal at the Boneyard right now, and I will be back again someday soon, I hope. 
<laughs> but uh, just remember, just because your five senses can't detect it doesn't mean it's not really happening. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Hmm. <laughs>